Hey everyone, it's Dez, and it is everyone's favorite time of the year. It's that time of the year, you know, the holidays, and where everything's starting to wind down, the year's coming to a close, and of course we all want to talk about what was the best during that year. So I'm here today to go over with you guys the best of beauty for 2018. This of course is extremely subjective. It's just what I thought was good from 2018. And honestly, most of the stuff in this video might not even be from 2018. I'm not really sure. I didn't really check too much on that. Most of it I know is very, very recent. There might be only like two things that aren't actually from this year. Um, but I just don't buy tons and tons of stuff from this specific year like I don't really get a lot of new releases all the time instead I just usually buy whatever I feel like now I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh 2018 was definitely the year of the gloss for me I used to not be a huge lip gloss person but this year I just couldn't get enough of it I literally bought tons and tons and tons of lip gloss so I'm going to say at least three of the items that I'm going to be showing you guys today are different types of lip gloss, but I will be doing them in its own little section, so if you don't like lip gloss, you don't have to listen to me just, you know, yada yada about them. But to start off, I'm going to go over with what everyone is saying is the most popular item of 2018, and that would be eyeshadow palettes. Tons and tons of eyeshadow palettes came out this year. It seemed kind of like it was never ending, like every time I just got on Instagram, like Trend Mood would have just pages and pages of new eyeshadow palettes coming out, which is fine. I love eyeshadow palettes, but I definitely didn't buy a lot of them. I only bought a couple of them and very, very few made it to the top list in my brain because I feel like the faster a company produces the eyeshadow palettes, the lower the quality gets. And it took a lot for a palette to stand out for me this year for me to put it in this video. So first, and my absolute favorite that I got this year for eyeshadow palettes is the Violet Voss Flamingo Palette. I got this as a gift. My loving boyfriend got this for me for our anniversary because I might have dropped a hint that I wanted it. And I absolutely love it. When I saw this on Sephora, I was just inspired. I thought it, all the colors were beautiful and they all went together. I'm wearing out my eyes today. I'm using like a pink and orange kind of scheme there. And I'll show you the inside and cover up the camera so you don't blind you guys. But these are all the shades. I just think they are absolutely gorgeous. I get so much inspiration from this. I just look at this palette and I think that it is not only visually pleasing, but everything kind of works together. Um, and what I mean by that is that I, I feel like you could make a lot of combinations with this by using these kind of orangey browns as your base and then, you know, deepening it with the black because this isn't really an opaque black. It's more to deepen your outer corner. And I really appreciate that. Um, you can pretty much use any of these colors with that. Um, even these wilder ones that you might not think go with everything, I somehow found a way to make it work with the oranges. And I'll show you guys a couple of pictures up in the right there. Or is it left? I think it's left for you guys. So here is some of the looks that I made with this palette. I just, it was so easy to do. I just found the color combinations to be very inspiring. All of the shadows were extremely easy to blend. Like I had such a really easy time with this palette. Blending out the corners of my eyeshadow, it never bunched up, it never got patchy. It just always kind of seamlessly blended with one another. And all of these colors, surprisingly, they don't get muddy with each other. Like I can mix the teal color and the brown color and I wouldn't get a huge mess. It would actually like seamlessly blend together, which is really, really nice to have. All the shimmers were popping. I love them. And you didn't even really need to use like any Fix Plus or any setting spray with them to make the shimmer come out more. Overall, I think it's a really, really fun palette. It was definitely, definitely one of my absolute favorites this year. I feel like I can make a ton of looks with this and it goes for every season. If I wanna do something icy in the winter, I just use the blues in here. If I wanna do something really bright and warm for the fall, I can use the reds and stuff and the oranges. I just feel like you can get so much use out of this palette. Another palette that I had a really good time with this year that I thought was one of the best of the best that I tried was the Bad Habit Athena palette. I had done a video on this at the beginning of the year 
where I tried out all of the different Hush Beauty palettes. And I definitely think that those palettes are some of my favorites. I don't have the Naturals one from Aqualon like I did in the past video. It's in my dorm because I'm home for the holidays and I don't have all my makeup with me. And or that one would definitely be in this video too. But one of my favorites is the Athena palette that I tried out. It just has so many beautiful, beautiful colors and it is the dupe for the uh, Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. I love the purples, I love the reds. I felt like there were a lot, a lot of uh, reddy orange palettes this year and I really liked that kind of theme, but I really enjoyed the pops of purple that they gave in this palette. Um, I'm still, the jury's still out on whether or not uh, I think dupes are ethical or not as far as, you know, the person who made the palette put a lot of creative work into it and that, you know, maybe making dupes and ripoffs and stuff of the palettes is not very nice, but it's definitely more affordable and I think that this one performs better than most of my prestige shadows. So I definitely thought it was worth it. It's a very affordable option if you couldn't afford to get the Desert Dusk palette this year and this would definitely perform just as well. Another product for the eyes that I really liked this year was the new ColourPop Jelly Much shadows. I don't really understand the name, like Jelly Much. Is it supposed to be like a play on Very Much? I'm not really sure, but I really ended up liking them. I kind of thought like when I saw it that it was like, oh, it's just like a gooey shadow. It's like the Farsali Jelly Beam highlighter where it's fun and like a putty consistency. But this actually ended up being really nice. I got one for their birthday collection and a couple others that I really enjoyed. And I find them to be the best to just pop on the lid after you've already done your transition shades. And I really, really like it. The packaging looks like most of their other um, ColourPop items. It has that plastic rim. These ones are actually colored if you got them from the birthday line. And it has a little safety tab that I always put in because I don't want to get it everywhere. And this is what it looks like out of the container. This one is a very like duochrome blue and brown kind of color. I think they go on really buttery and I really enjoy the looks that I get out of them. I think that they're a very versatile product and are just kind of a more interesting take on a not so much a liquid shadow, not so much a solid shadow. It's kind of in between. It's just kind of like a little jelly consistency. It's a fun texture and it ends up looking really nice on the lids. So I thought that this was worth a mention because I really enjoy using these. Moving on to some products for the face. I really ended up enjoying the Anastasia Beverly Hills Blush Trios. I know these, I don't think I don't think that these were from 2018, but I did try them this year and I really, really enjoyed them. Uh, the packaging is just, oh, this is, this is beautiful. <laughs> it is so luxe. Like this is some nice shit, yo. Like this is top of the line packaging. It's super heavy. It's got like their little logos embedded in there and you can't really see it cause it's like really messy from my fingertips. But up close, you can just see all of the little details on it, and I love it. And I think this is really good for travel. It gives me a lot of options, and I really love the particular shades that I picked out on my complexion. I have this in the color Pink Passion, and I think that it is definitely my favorite of them all. They have a couple different other color combinations, and I like this one the most. This kind of like purpley color looks amazing on. It's actually really really nice and subtle when it's blended out on the cheeks it's not too intense it just looks very very like a natural flush and then i really also like the orangey one in here because that's the one i'm wearing today it's a very natural kind of you know suntan look and i really enjoy that i haven't quite used the pink yet i'm not really into like bright pink blushes but i really really like these two i think they look super super natural and I think that other than that, they're just great for travel. That's why I brought it home. And I really, really enjoy the formula in this as well as the really nice packaging and how the colors look on my skin. So the good news about this is that now that it is 2018 and this was not from this year, it's actually on sale a lot of places. You can get an Ulta on sale. I know that TJ Maxx, this is where I got mine. For only like $10, it was definitely worth it. So much so that I went back and I bought another one. My next favorite thing is also related to the blush and it is because I found a new favorite blush brush. I'm sorry that uh, mine is a bit dirty but it is the Real Techniques 302 brush and they had this I believe in the bold metals collection they had um, but I preferred this color. I don't remember what this collection is called. I think it was like 
diamond something or it had to do with like the sparkle and the glitter um either way i really really wanted this brush and i got it because i didn't have anything that was quite shaped like this and it's kind of like tapered to the sides i really really enjoy this for putting on my blush i feel like it fits the cheek just perfectly when you brush it and it distributes the color really evenly so this was one of my favorite brushes and i mean it's also adorable it's really pretty so yeah so my next favorite for 2018 is also not from 2018 but I tried it for the first time this year I just had the travel size with me today because I'm traveling and it is the benefit their real mascara I have previously tried the roller lash mascara and it's one of my favorites I still love that so so much but I tried the their real one for the first time because I think I got this in like some sort of subscription box and I finally tried it and I loved it. It gives you those nice long lashes, but it also makes them look fuller. So it kind of just brings out each individual lash so that it looks like you have more lashes than you actually do. I find when I use this that it stays on all day. It doesn't flake. It's not waterproof, so criers beware, but... I really, really enjoy it, and I think that it's definitely one of the best mascaras that I've tried. I've been trying a lot of mascaras this year because for some reason I just kind of had like the feeling that I needed to branch out and look at more mascaras, and this was definitely my favorite because of the formula and how it looks on my eyes. And I think that it's just a good starter mascara, like that anybody would probably like this because not only is it lengthening, but it's also volumizing. On to the lip products. I had two favorite lip products for this year and they were both glosses. <laughs> Sorry guys, uh, I've been watching a channel called Samantha Ravendahl and she is just one of the best people I think I've ever watched on YouTube. I love her personality, I love her sarcasm, her humor is really great, but She's also obsessed with glossy lip products and it kind of got me wanting to do glossy lip products. I found out that I really enjoy glosses that if they aren't sticky or if they are very just flattering. I tried out a crap ton of gloss products and these two were the ones that made it to the, the finale. The first one being the Buxom Va Va Plump Lip Gloss. This is a huge lip gloss. I really appreciate the size that they make this in because it is much much bigger than I feel like a lot of lip products are these days. Um, the color I got is Lights Down. It's a very like deep kind of brown russet color. I'll give you a swatch because I don't think I have any reference pictures for this but it is just kind of like a very ready brown color. It looks very, very flattering on, and it was great for fall. It also has like this like really, really intense spearmint flavor and smell. It's nice and refreshing. It's like, ooh, you know, got like this burst of refreshing mintiness. The colors are super, super opaque with this, and it's not sticky. It's just a very like oily texture, so it's not going to stick together too much with your other lip, but it will kind of slide around. I usually pair this with a matching lip liner, but if I'm on the go, I really don't have to. I just have to make sure that after I eat that it's not all over. And then next, like many, many other people probably are going to be posting about this year in their beauty favorites is the Fenty Gloss Balm. I freaking love this. Now this is the original. I don't believe that they put this out in 2018. I think it was 2017, but they came out with two more shades this year. And this just is my favorite one. The original, which is in, I believe it's Fenty Glow, is my absolute favorite. This just looks good on everyone. Like I love that Rihanna is doing that whole universal color theme thing because it looks fantastic on. I'm wearing it today. It just kind of gives you like, that very seductive like juicy lip kind of look and I really really like it the color is very very flattering it has a little bit of glitter you know but very tasteful looking glitter it smells amazing it kind of smells like fruit punch and I really really like that it is not sticky but it's also not really greasy feeling. It's just kind of like a very stays put formula. So if anyone was going to get something from Fenty this year, I would just highly, highly recommend this. It stays on for a long time. It's beautiful. It's great for every season. And I wore this a ton this year. And then finally, I did find something from skincare that I really, really liked. This year I was in the market for a new eye cream and I tried a bunch of different ones out and I didn't really particularly like them until I tried the Belief Moisturing Eye Balm. I just had the travel size because my other one's at home, well at the dorm, and it's just a really, really cute 
travel size. Um, it's a very moisturizing formula, as the title would suggest, but it's free from all like this other gunk. I had tried the, I think it's the Ole Hendrickson Banana Under Eye Cream, and it had glitter in it. Like, y'all are skincare, you don't need glitter. So I just didn't like that one. I didn't think that I wanted anything like that in a skincare routine. Um, I just wanted something clean refreshing, moisturizing, that was gonna help some of like the dryness you get around your eyes in the winter time. And I fell onto the Belief Moisturizing Eye Balm and I love it. It's perfect consistency. It's not a super thick cream, it's more of a watery kind of cream. And I feel like that just spreads really nicely over the eyes. It's really delicate, it's not super heavy. And I found that it definitely moisturizes my eye area. I like to put this on before I go to bed at night. So yeah, this was definitely a win for 2018. And well, everyone, that is all I have for you guys today. Those were all of the best products for me in 2018. Comment down below what some of you guys' favorite products were for this year, and I will see you all later. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.